You are watching the vodka stream. Boop! What is happening, guys? How you guys doing? It's Saturday. What? Saturday edition of the vodka stream. That's right. Well, you know, had to do it. Come on. Um... But uh, yeah, thank you guys for clicking in as per usual. How you guys doing? Who's out there? Talk to me. Let's go. And look at that with the green hearts. Yes. What's going on, Mark? And uh, other Mark. What's going on, Marvin? How you guys doing? It's a good show. Well, you know, I try to put on a good show. You know, you know how it is. And of course, we got Sco. What is up? How you doing? Mr. McKenzie. Thank you, sir. Thank you for uh, joining uh, the last stream, too. Everything so who else is here? Hello, hello, Mr. Rock and Roll. What's up, buddy? Yeah. Uh I'd say Christina Wren's picture. Oh yeah, that's right. With uh Wayne T. Carr and Fisher kind of points to her being a non kilowatt <laughs> in, in the yeah. Well. Uh what's up, Dave? How you doing there, Jonathan? Nice to see you. We got Jess here. We should be excited for this. Definitely should be. It's like, uh, see, uh, too much reflection. There we go. Too much reflection happening on that. I had to make it green tonight. I don't know. You know, I figured it was fitting to make it green tonight. You know, uh, we got, okay. Ray Porter is amazing. Hi <laughs> yes, he is amazing. I will always use that intro to the vodka stream because it's just so good. Just so good. Uh, have a drink on me. ACDC. There you go. Good song. Like it. Uh, that's probably gonna be next Saturday because I was going to do it this Saturday, but you know, Things uh, things came to be, so we'll do it next Saturday, Eric, for sure. Uh, hopefully, nothing should uh, get rid of you know should get in the way of that, so we should be good. All right, then we got uh, Mr. Uh, M Kaiser Butt. Nice, nice name. Appreciate that, <laughs> Alex. How you doing? Be excited. Yeah, it's gonna be good, man. Uh, what's going on, Kevin? Go green. That's right. That's what we're doing. All right, so thank you guys for uh, clicking in. Like I said, it was a special Saturday edition of the Vodka Stream. It was cool, so I'm going to pour just a little bit from the last night I have, you know, raise a glass, you know, do that. Still the Vodka Stream. I was sipping on some, uh, if you guys watched the uh, the Batman the Fanimated stream that me and Scott did, uh, Scott and I did um, earlier. Yeah, it was, um, I had a little bit of vino going on, kind of like a pregame. Been a lot of good live streaming going on this weekend, that's for sure. And uh, yeah, uh, and I guess Wayne's just making the rounds now, man. It's pretty awesome stuff. I'm glad that he can actually start talking about this because a lot, you know, we were kind of wondering, and when is that gonna be the case? Is it gonna happen? Is he gonna be able to talk? And then when 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 I think when Zach finally revealed it at Justice Con last weekend, it was kind of like, all right, now here we go, here we go. Let's try. Let's welcome him into the fandom now, fully. Even though, you know, it was already kind of out there, but now we could fully welcome them in, and I, and I love that. So cheers, guys. We'll have a good show tonight. Hmm. Ah, good goddamn stuff. Oof. Like it. Ah, the Fanimated stream is a blast. Well, thank you. Thank you, Dave, David, Mr. Hummingbird. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's always a lot of fun. I mean, Scott and I love, uh, we love Batman the Animated Series so much. That's why it just kind of worked out. When I came up with the idea, hey, let's discuss each episode in order let's do that and yeah and that's what i mean that's why all the joker stuff is out because you know the episode that we talked about was christmas with the joker uh so it was kind of like all right i'm gonna wear my new joker shirt that i just got this week and uh, of course i got some jo uh, joker funkos out right now so hey look at that mr mckenzie thank you sir fire chip thank you every little support helps so, all right. So I think uh, now that we're all here, everything's all good. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my guest in. Let me uh, let me get my tweet going here. Boop. Hold on. Where is he car? All right. Get my tweet going. He joined. Did you guys see that, um, that, uh, that Zack Snyder video earlier today about Army of the Dead when it showed uh, those kids? Uh, Re, re, uh, redoing like uh, his uh, trailer, like doing like a, a bare bones thing. That was so awesome. I don't know if you guys saw that. But that was an awesome video. I see it right now. Netflix actually tweeted it out earlier and uh, it was great. And he got to talk to them too. That's what was cool. He got to talk to the group. 
And uh, those those kids are creative as all hell, man. I mean, how they were able to match what was on the screen, what was on the trailer with just like your basic essentials. Did such a good job. Let's join the stream. All right. Boop. All right, there we go. All right, without further ado, um, without further ado, let's bring in the guest, Mr. Wang T. Carr. What is up, sir? Sir, What's going on, Dave? How you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. Thank you for joining. Let me get that background. Let me get our names in there. Let's see. I got the background. There we go. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Wayne, thank you for joining. Uh, I appreciate uh, taking some time out. I know uh, you're kind of making the rounds now. It's kind of been uh, it's been a little bit interesting couple of weeks for you, huh? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, this is my this is my weekend. My wife is pregnant. We're expecting oh. a baby, so I got a lot of uh, decorating to do, and um, you know, getting my life together before the baby comes. Oh man, that's got to be that's got to be something that's pretty crazy. You guys know uh, boy girl yet? You know girl. Girl, nice, yeah. nice. So a lot of decorating, you know. And I know, like the the basic colors, are always either blue or pink. But maybe go for some green, you know, just a little bit of green yeah. in there. Sneak, see? Yeah. <laughs> we we gotta sneak, <laughs> yeah, sneak some green in there. No, but uh, yeah, I appreciate you joining. Uh, I don't know if you have a, a drink on hand, but usually that's kind of what what's going on. What are you drinking? Wait, what we got? Ah, there it is. What are you drinking? That's a little bourbon. A little bourbon. Oh, there you go, a bourbon guy, guys. I knew I was already going to, I mean, I already knew I was going to like Wayne, but now that he's a bourbon guy, now I'm just like, dang, yeah, that's a good drink right there. Sorry, I didn't have any vodka, man. Yeah, it's okay. I don't like, I've, I've said it before, like uh, when it comes to uh, guests, I'm like, I don't discriminate on the drink because sometimes I'll actually pour some bourbon too. That's like my second drink of choice. Part of me kind of wishes that I actually called it the bourbon. I thought drink. it was vino for you. Well, that's the thing. I like rotate. Because I like I like some vino, you know, just for something that's not gonna go straight to woof, you know, something to just sip on goes good with a, a nice steak or you know a good dinner. Uh, but earlier today I had some vino left, so when I was like doing my earlier stream, I just was sipping on that. But yeah. um, but no, like when it, when I, I actually there was part of me that wishes I actually went with bourbon stream because but I was on a real big vodka kick a while back, and then all of a sudden the it just turned into, hey, just call it the vodka stream. I'm like, that's a good idea. Why not? Yeah. So, so I don't discriminate on, uh, you know, when it comes to whatever drink anybody wants to drink. Okay, good. Feel free to. So you're 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 fine. You're fine. Oh, yeah. Cool. But uh, but yeah, like I said, it's been a, a crazy uh, couple of weeks for for you, um, where it kind of just slowly came out, just a little bit, like little bits at a time, and then finally last week, Zach was going w Wayne T. Carr. That's the yeah. guy. Yeah. So then you were able to kind of more talk about it, right? Well, I mean, I could have talked about it before, but I felt like, I mean, it's it's his deal. You know what I mean? Yeah. He, he hasn't censored me or anything like that from the jump. So uh, I just wanted him to say whatever he needed to say before I opened my mouth. So, yeah, no, it makes sense. And yeah. I mean, I know there's, it, you know, when, when it came to all that, some people were kind of wondering, was there NDAs involved or was it just like, what was actually going to be happening, you know, when we were able to like all officially talk about the fact that uh, you were part of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I mean, that's what you got to love about Zach. Cause you just never know <laughs> when he's going to drop. And that's the thing is like, I, you know, we were talking back and forth and I was going, I kind of, cause I, you know, I, I talked to him too. And I, and mm -hmm. when he let me know, like it was you, I was like, oh, okay, I'll reach out. And then he said, well, yeah, I'm going to reveal it this time and then it didn't happen and i was like oh man <laughs> when is it gonna happen and it was just yeah. kind of you just never know with zach and that's why we love the guy yep yeah he just likes to keep it uh like keeps it keeps it uh keep us on our toes that's for damn sure oh, so yeah. before before we uh like dive into everything i you know i always like to get to to know uh my guests and uh, i want to get to know to know you uh of course uh you're currently you live in uh, glendale right now right oh uh, that's yeah I yeah do. Glendale. Uh, where did you, uh, where were you born? I was born in Long Beach, California, but I was raised in the oh, metropolitan area. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. And uh, growing up a little wing T car, when did the acting bug bite you? Uh, my first acting experience was my senior year in high school. Okay. I just did it because uh, they needed some help. No guys were uh, actually auditioning for the plays. And so I helped out. And that was the beginning of it. You just there's just something about it that you've just felt 
like, wow, I could do this. I like this. I really dig this. You know, I was always kind of like a class clown type of person. So they thought, oh, he would help us out. We need some guys in the show. So, yeah. You're like, hey, you open your mouth during the class all the time. Why don't you do it on stage? Exactly. Yes. Exactly. So it works out. Yeah, that works out. So you're doing all that. And then you get into... Um, like all the theater stuff and uh, you know, look, looking at your uh, all the Shakespeare theater and all the stuff that you're doing. I mean, you've been in a, you know, quite a bit of plays, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's been my, that's been my professional career. I bounced around across the country doing that. And when my, my wife and I decided to settle down, we wanted <laughs> to be someplace sunny and uh, we came to California and we've been here for five years. Nice. Nice. Yeah. 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 There's definitely an abundance of sun here. I try to close my blinds right now just to get that sun out of here for a little bit to get the ambiance. Um, that's cool. Um, um, uh, so when it came to like trying to get into, um, I mean, theater is obviously your, your main profession, but you know, trying to, I know, I noticed like on your IMDB, you had like a role in the new SWAT series. There is a couple other things that you're trying to get into. Um, how has that process been trying to like dive into either TV shows or movies? Oh man, I'm sure you, you've talked to people and you know how hard it is to yeah. uh, break into Hollywood and LA scene. But um, uh, for, fortunately I, I came here knowing some people so that helped me out with an agent and a manager and everything. So I was able to get that right away. But of course, nobody knows me here really. All of my connections are across the country in different uh, states here and there. And, um, and because I hadn't done too much film and television, it's been a process of kind of like slowly getting to know people, getting people to trust me, realize I'm not a crazy person and, uh, and, and that I can act. Uh, yeah. So um, yeah, I've been, I've been hitting the pavement like we all, like we all do. You just got to put in the time, man. You just got to get out there and do the thing. I yeah. mean, yeah, I, 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 I've been on, when it comes to auditioning and I know like, you know, when you go on auditions, uh, on auditions, like I, I've done it before. And I honestly, like it's, it wasn't for me. I always thought ah, I could probably do that thing. And man, when I went on like an audition one time and I left, I went, wow, that was not what I thought it was going to be. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it is definitely a whole different beast that, you know, sometimes I, you think you have the confidence, but it's like, whoa, man, maybe, maybe not because yeah, man. Whew, I just, you, you literally have people just staring at you and they're like, go, you know, and you could practice it a, a thousand times in front of the mirror and be like, I got this. But man, when you're like right there and having to do it, I mean, that's a whole different, that's a whole different atmosphere. Yes. So, it is. I mean, I, I mean, I commend that for, you know, when it comes to acting and when, when it comes to actors and doing that. And uh, you also do a, you're also a performance coach, right? Yep. Yeah. How's that? Uh, how's that going? Oh, that's great, man. I uh, I work with a lot of people um, in certain businesses, uh, in companies across the uh, the country, well, across the world, actually, and helping them with their presentations and things like that. So uh, I do that. I help people with uh, their their auditions. Yeah. yeah. Like what? So what was like some of the you know top things that you would actually tell somebody when it, when it comes to, all right, they're going to be going for, for an audition and it's like, so-and-so, is there like certain like guidelines that you kind of like fine tuned over the years that say like, try to do it like this or, or whatever? No, there's nothing that I, that I, that's specific for like the general public. Yeah. Everybody different you know like if i was talking to you i'll probably say something similar to what i would tell myself and that is like forget the eyes that are on you right don't yeah. worry about the people that are right in front of you imagine that you're in the bathroom in front of that mirror doing the thing that you do in your privacy of your own you know place in a bath yeah. just forget about everything else and just do your thing and that's something i have to tell myself because it's, it's difficult when people are looking yeah. at you and they're just like all right go before yeah. Yeah, see what you got here. Come on, come on. You know, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I mean, that's 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 yeah, I can understand that because yeah, like I said, when I did that, I mean, and there's even times too where you know, even when I'm doing this stuff, you know, mm -hmm. I'll have stuff in my head where I'm going, okay, let's talk about this, talk about this. And there'll be times where it's just, oh man, I I try to ignore the fact that oh, there's so many people watching, there's eyes that are watching. I mean, when when it comes to this meeting right here, which is becoming the new norm. Yeah. When uh, when when talking to, um, you know, I, like yesterday, I, uh, a couple of the actors from Mortal Kombat, I did a press junket. That was a whole different experience because, you know, I'm starting to dive into the whole press junket thing. And usually that's all live and you're sitting there with the, 
the people. And now it's all with like with this kind of setting. And it's pretty interesting. It's kind of cool because I mean, obviously, you know, you're in your own home and you can, you know, talk to people. Um, I mean, now that you're going to be diving into that, I mean, I mean, do you think like um, where everything's going right now, specifically because of the pandemic? I mean, when more stuff is coming out, when, when it comes to utilizing this technology, I mean, do you, do you see like that's where pretty much everything's heading? Oh, yeah, man. I mean, like, yeah. you know, the casting directors, the producers, everybody, the, the studios, they're going to save a lot of money. Right. Yeah. So they don't have to pay rent for some space to get people to come out. This is this is not going anywhere. <laughs> and it, it, it sucks for me because I'm a people person. Like I like to be able to look in your eyes and say, hey, yeah. how are you doing? And, and kind of gauge where you're coming from and how you're feeling. And you can't really do that on this medium very well. It's a little hard. There's a little bit of a separation. You know what I mean? Yeah. Unless somebody just like, really gets into the camera, like right Even up there. It's a little weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm watching he, TV right now. That's what <laughs> I see you, Dave. We're talking. Yeah. This is great. But this, this is, is great. The screen. Yeah, <laughs> it's all for you. Punch you in the shoulder, you know what I mean? You no, know, exactly. Or, you know, do a little, I mean, obviously with the pandemic, we got to like- Yeah, right, it'll be elbow. It'll yeah, be a little elbow. bit of elbow or something. Yeah. There. That would have been cool to do. We could have just sit and had a chat and actually had a bottle of bourbon and just poured it and been like, hey, cheers, clink. And yeah, I know. Hopefully right. one of these days, hopefully one of these days, you know, I mean, obviously this technology is always going to be used, utilized. Mm -hmm. um, but I really do miss like, the, you know, when it came to cons or- uh, getting together with like, you know, uh, like even recently, a bunch of people got together in Detroit to watch um, Batman or Superman, you know, it was yeah. a whole Snyder thing. And I missed out on it. And I was like, damn it, I just I really wish I could have made that just to talk to people that I usually talk to through a screen. Yeah, <laughs> you know? right. there's just something about it. So all right, let's get to um, where? Um, well, let's get to the the green guy, I guess you could say. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's talk about that because, I mean, obviously, you know, I'm um, talking about um, stuff that you're doing right now. Like you said, you know, you're helping people out. And uh, I think that's absolutely fantastic. Uh, I love the fact that, um, you know, just trying to help people out and like, you know, with their whatever they're doing. Yeah. Uh, something that, uh, you know, a, a certain Green Lantern would like to do, you know. So mm -hmm. let's bring up the, the picture right here. Um, so first off, let me know, like. When you got contact, when when you first talked to Zach, what was that like? <laughs> it was it was like a dream for real. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I didn't I didn't think it was going to happen. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sure you know I'm friends with Ray, yeah. And, uh, and he called me out of out of the blue, which is normal. And uh, and he said, "Hey, uh, so there's this thing that may happen. <laughs> uh, I want to introduce you to someone." <laughs> And I had no idea what he was talking about, but that's just, that's, that's Ray. He's a little suspicious yeah. sometimes. And uh, uh, long story short, he introduced me to Zach. He said, Zach is going to call you next week. Sure enough, Zach called me. I'm talking to him. I'm trying to be cool. Uh, because to me, I was like, this is the dude who did 300. And that kind of like rocked me when it first came out. Right. <laughs> and, um, and, uh, so I was talking to him, playing it cool, and it was it was a lot of fun. And you know, the conversation wasn't extremely long. We were it was done. I thought, okay, that was that. Everything is whatever. And then he called me again, and we talked a little bit more. And then it just happened a couple of a uh, couple of times. And the next thing I know, he was like, "So I want to do this thing. This is part of my vision, and um, I wanted to see if you wanted to help me out with that." Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, exactly. yeah. You know, what are you, what are you, what are you thinking? What is that um, mind? Uh, I, I want to, I want to bring the Green Lantern to the screen. The Green Lantern, John Stewart. Okay. All right. How are we going to do this? We're in the middle of a pandemic. You know, COVID is rampant. Yeah. Like, well, <laughs> I have a driveway. I'll set <laughs> the driveway. Infamous uh, driveway. <laughs> okay. Uh, that crazy. He crazy. Uh, yes, he a bit <laughs> but 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 I went with it and I was just like and, and it wasn't until I actually got to his house that I that I thought oh this is this is real yeah I mean yeah. I can I can only imagine what this driveway looks like because that driveway is becoming historic because even Harry Lennox when he came and did his Martian man under stuff it was in the driveway yep. so this is gonna be like a landmark I mean you know Zach should have start charging people to see his driveway where magic can actually happen That's so cool. So he calls you up. <laughs> yeah. He calls you up 
and you're you, you go there and I, I think he even made the joke uh last week when he was talking about it that he he was probably like he probably didn't think I was serious or something like that. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> Yeah, of course not. I thought he was playing around. I get to his house and I'm just like, okay. Are we making a, are we making a fan film, Zach? I, mean, yeah. I had no idea, and he had it all. He had it all set up, and I was like, oh, you know, and uh, this this is a real thing. And um, you know, I was I was just so you know I was working on my first my first major film set, nice. and it was a grand thing. And then the that night when I went to Zach's house. It was a grand thing, but it was on a much smaller scale. So I was like, okay, he's really doing this thing. And um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a trip, man. So of course, this is the, uh, the image that ended up coming out was this one right here. And when you first saw this, were you like, oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, at the same time, everybody else did. And I, I yeah. thought, oh, okay. I had no idea that was going to be a thing. Yeah, I, I think a lot of us did. I, I even went, what the heck? Like, where did the, all of a sudden it just started making the rounds and it was like, okay, like, uh, did Zach approve of this? Was this supposed to happen? Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, and, and, and immediately I was like, uh, all right. I mean, I, and then of course, then people were going, oh, wait, that's, that's so and so. That's so and so. And I'm, I'm sure you started seeing a lot of that. And I noticed you actually joined Twitter recently. And I, and I love the fact that your first tweet was hashtag restore the Snyderverse. Absolutely. Man, I mean, how awesome was that movie? I mean, come on. It was so dope, man. Oh, oh, so many levels. So, so many. Levels. I mean, and then, you know, going back to Ray Fisher, I mean, he really stole the show. Uh, I yeah. mean, that guy. Uh, there were so many. I, I mean, I, I, when I ever wanted, when I, if I ever talked to him again, it was like, I want to just tell him, like, dude, you made me probably choke up three, maybe four times in that movie. I mean, it's yeah. a long movie, but there's so much that he did with that role that is, you know, that just, he's definitely the all-star and it'd be awesome if we get more of that. But also we also want to see what Zach shot with you. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. You know longer than I have talked to him. Ask I know, him. dude, I, I, I've tried, you know, but I mean, you got a studio. There's a studio involved, sadly. And I, there's already a hashtag going around saying release the Green Lantern scene. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to be on that too. Yes. Okay. So uh, I saw that earlier, guys. And I'm suggesting everybody that is watching right now, I start saying hashtag release the Green Lantern scene because we do want to see this. And apparently there might, there is probably something, but you know, uh, you know, Zach. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious yeah. about that. I wonder, I wonder okay, if you've so been. Yeah. Okay. So when you were shooting, obviously they didn't have an actual suit for you. It was all the mocap suit, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did he give you, did he show you like designs besides, you know, I mean, obviously you saw this design, but that was like more of a concept thing. Um, did he actually show you any designs of the suit? No. <laughs> Just nothing. Just run with it. You're going to have a Green Lantern, you know, emblem on your chest. That's all you need. Did he, you don't even have a ring? I, I had a, a a place, you know, a, a thing that kind of like was, a, um, you know, it was just a placeholder, right? Oh, okay. So they could do whatever they needed to do in the, spe uh, you know, the effect. <laughs> but yeah, that's all you had. Here's a crack. Yeah, we they just popped open a, a box of Cracker Jacks, and here you go. Yeah. There's a ring. No, for real, for real, Dave. Though it was, it, I think it, I think it was like red gaff tape or something. Like it was just, it was something <laughs> like that. I'm not joking. It really was like I could oh, see that. Great. And they just made up a ring on the yeah. spot. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I can see that right now. <laughs> That's so awesome. So somebody just kind of went, all right, let's take some tape and just fashion it into a ring. It'll feel like a ring. You got this. There you go, sir. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now act. <laughs> so obviously, like, you're probably in front of a green screen, a green backdrop or something. And, yeah. and you obviously had some lines, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. But you can't really probably say any of those lines, right? I don't remember any of the of the <laughs> lines, but uh, uh, but you know, I think I think Zach has pretty much said said everything. You know, of course, yeah. Zach will film a scene like when the the scene that we filmed. We did it. I don't know how many times, and he he gave me lines. Mm -hmm. on the spot. Ooh. Uh, come, uh, you know, you, you jump, you come down, you fly down, say this. And I was like, okay, great. 
And then he was like, all right, and then do this. All right, cool. All right, let's do that again. And then add this line from the, you know, and so we were just like creating it on the spot. So ultimately, if we ever see the scene, I'm sure it's going to be an amalgamation of all of the things that he kind of like played around with. But, um, but the scene is the Martian Manhunter scene. Yes. It's that. I yeah. basically said different versions of what he said. Yeah. So it, 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 it wouldn't have, and, and I don't know if he was going to have, you know, my homeboy Kilowog over here or yeah. whoever. I have no idea what he was going to do with that. All I know is I went there with my, my little PJ suit on <laughs> and uh, I got to his driveway and he had this little stand that had a tennis ball that he called Ben Affleck. Yes. And, uh, and uh, I was like, I'm talking to Bruce Wayne now. Okay. Yeah. Great. And then he gave me some lines and kind of tweaked it a little bit along the way. And yeah, it was a lot of fun. And then I went home. <laughs> and then he went home and, I don't know, but it, did he also say that it might not be in the movie? Did he oh, yeah, also? Yeah. I mean, like I knew that from the jump, like he knew that, yeah. um, he knew that, you know, that this was something that was, that was new. He wanted to uh, uh, add the rest of his, his vision. And he knew that the studio had whatever it is that they were, I don't know, uh, um, telling him. Mm -hmm. And so he knew that that was a possibility that it wouldn't happen. And uh, yeah. Eventually, See, it didn't. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, <laughs> when he's actually shooting something in his driveway, I mean, that right off the bat, you kind of go, "Huh? Does the studio know about this?" Or you know, yeah, yeah, oh, no. yeah, yeah. Which, which I, and, it, and it's such a weird thing too, because you know, you know, I've been involved with all this and just all the drama that happened behind the behind the scenes, and you know, luckily we did get a, a great movie but you know there, obviously i think a lot of us even though the martian manhunter scene is absolutely fantastic awesome. uh i mean there was there was there was rumors that you know that, that zach always had this plan to have green lantern visit bruce wayne and and, and that he actually filmed ben affleck you know and then principal t photography responding to maybe what you were actually saying or something like that and whether yeah. it was kilowog or whatever um you know, and then of course he repurposed to the Martian Manhunter scene, which was great. You know, Harry Lennox is great. I know you you know Harry, right? You've worked yeah, with him. I don't know him personally, but I'm a fan. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. The guy is just. Uh, yeah, I've I've talked to him. I mean, talk about just a guy who like when I when I was about to interview him, I was a little like mm, a little nervous. He's a little intimidating, yeah. but he's such a sweetheart once you just start talking to him. And I know. Um, you know, going with, uh, you know, your theater background, he, of course he has theater background, uh, when it comes to Ray also, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, obviously that there's something about Zach when he sees something in someone, um, you know, that it's like, okay, he looks at you and goes, you're going to pull this off. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's one of the things like, even when I, and when talking to him about you and, and, um, he goes, well, you know, well, look at my cast. And I went, yeah, that's right. Because when the initial Justice League cast, if you look at the, I guess you could say the six of them, I mean, when he cast them, they were like, besides Ben Affleck, of course, you know, they weren't really names. Now they're names. Some of them are names. And, but he just, he's so great at casting and, you know, and I'm going to bring in somebody who's also a fan of yours too. Um, that, that also is like, you know, part of theater. And he brought this guy in because he was like, you know what, this guy, he just, I, he's the guy. He's my guy that's going to be, you know, all the way from Apocalypse, Mr. Ray Porter, Dark Side. Oh, hello, sir. <laughs> What's up, Ray Porter? How are you, man? How are you, man? I'm so good. It's good to see your face. It's good yeah. to see your face, man. It's good to see, see yours. Oh, yeah, awesome. this is what it's. Yeah, just thought I'd bring Ray in, you know, because you know it's a little appreciation here. Got to support, man. Got to support. support. Well, I mean, OSF I mean, in the house. You guys are kind of like in a similar, you know, Ray was at a point in a similar yeah. boat you were where it was outed that, hey, the Ray Porter's dark side. And then Ray was going, should I say something? I don't know what to, you know, it was kind of like. Yeah, it was like, why, why would I, you know, how, how do you do that? And of course, I'm no stranger to the roller coaster of feelings <laughs> around yeah. it. Um, you know, and I love the things I watched your, I watched your interview yesterday as well, which was great. <laughs> But I really liked what you had to say about, you know, yeah, I mean, it's a bummer and you're really sad and everything. But, you know, I, I got to help Zach and I, you know, I got to explore this this role and this character and everything. Mm -hmm. The icing on the cake, though, is how welcoming the fans were 
yeah, to me. And I know that they have been to you as well. They, they're just like, whatever, dude, come in. You're, you're here. You're with us, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. It's incredible. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's, I mean, when it, when it, when it was known that you were, you know, you were the guy, it was just kind of like, all right, let's welcome them in open door, open arms. You know, like I said, I mean, you know, damn this pandemic, but we all want to just give you a hug or, you know, at least an elbow bump or something, yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> but, and I want to uh, see that scene. I think, I think uh, we got to figure out who to, who to tell to ask Zach so that we can see that scene. Deborah. <laughs> yeah. Deborah's a great one. Yes. Yes. Debbie, I mean, did, you met Debbie too, right? Obviously, you were in their driveway. Did you meet Debbie? Uh, yeah, she was at a distance, though. She wasn't part of the the um, the COVID protocol, so uh, she was above. Yeah, <laughs> she was like, "Hi," out the window. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for joining. Yeah. No, but it, yeah, no, I know. I mean, hopefully, we get to see it. I mean, um, I think I think eventually, it's just. Like I said, you just never know what Zach's gonna do, and it's always it's almost like a method to his madness. I always I always think where it's like, all right. I mean, when he was like leading into everything else, like leading up to um, the release of the Snyder Cut. I mean, it just almost seemed like everything was almost perfectly executed, or he was just like, hey, why not just throw that out there and see what happens? You know, it almost seemed you know like that a little bit. And then when it came to Ray getting uh, um out i guess you could say ousted and then it was fine you know he was fine to talk i mean we all just welcome him in and now it's like we can't get enough of you ray we can't uh, well, yeah <laughs> and i'll keep pushing the edge of that envelope <laughs> um, yeah no i mean you know wayne you know i i had contacted you when ray told me what was up you know months ago and i was so excited uh yeah. and so happy for you um i mean for a couple of reasons one i mean obviously the role Yes. and the film but also to kind of you know run away with the circus that is you know Zack Snyder and Debbie and 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 that whole sort of world it's such a great thing to work with them yeah and uh you know you're i think you're in there now you know and um i you know i who knows what iterations we're going to see i mean this is clearly unfinished business i think this oh, yeah. is just my opinion I don't know anything, but it's clearly unfinished business. And I want to see you as Green Lantern. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so we want, we want you to have an actual ring, Wayne. All right. Yeah. Not, not, yeah. I almost got one in the movie. Oh, that's true. That's right. Almost. There's a scene where you almost got it, but then Artemis shot that arrow at you and said, you know, you can't fire. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> How dare so I want to see you with the ring, man. Definitely. <laughs> what, what, what would have happened? If dark side, you know, there's right. there's a lot smarter people than I that came up because people people <laughs> noticed it and and yeah. raised the question. Um, I will say now that you know now that the film's over, I can be irreverent about it. But it was yeah. funny. It's like you know, fight, fight, fight. <laughs> Ooh, pretty. Uh, you know, and then it didn't happen. I want that. Um, it's it is a gorgeous. People movie. said people said like the green. Ring might not have had an effect on Dark Side, but if it was a black ring or if it was a, a white or a red, yeah, uh, and different you know, colors. Probably people right now, like freaking out, you're oh, an course. idiot, but yeah, <laughs> that was what I no, know. I mean, there's so much mythology with like the different ring colors and everything. I mean, Wayne, yeah. I don't know how much you d you dove into you know the mythos of Green Lantern <laughs> just a little bit, right? Yeah, I mean, there's so much there and. You know, I mean, hopefully if something happens and things just align and maybe you could, you know, you know, and, and have an actual physical suit. I mean, Zach even said that uh, last week, like, hey, you know, we did CGI because there was no time. But, hey, if, yeah. if something in the future happened where you got an actual physical suit, I mean, oh, you'd be one up. You'd have to leave the band, though. Uh, Why? <laughs> because you'd be in a real suit as opposed to the baby suit. <laughs> Not the PJs. That's the thing. Right. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Stay so, in the baby suit, my friend. In the baby suit. <laughs> yeah. that's, what I, <laughs> that's what I always wondered too. And I, I, I even asked him, I was like, I mean, would you actually want a physical suit? Because part of it still would have to be CGI because I'm imagining that the, 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 the logo on the chest is going to be a little 3d. So there's still going to be elements. Yeah. I, I can't, I, you know, to be honest with you, I, I don't see, well, I shouldn't say that. I feel like, yeah, I feel like it wouldn't be uh, cohesive to have 
real and then part, you know, CGI. Mm -hmm. So you think like all, I think it all has to be CGI to make it real. Yeah. I mean, I think the one of the reasons the stigma that's on it is that darn 2011 Green Lantern movie with Ryan Reynolds. Some people just kind of look at that and go, oh, that was a misfire. I mean, obviously, there was a lot of things, other things that were wrong with it. And they talk about the CGI suit there. But at the same time, I'm like, first off, it's 10 years later. The technology's better, you know. And we're talking about Zack Snyder here. I mean, the man knows how to work CGI. Look what he did to Ray. I mean, he made Ray just scare the absolute shit out of all of us. <laughs> I mean, you saw the performance, you saw the look, you saw everything, right, Wayne? I mean, how, oh, yeah. how great was Ray? I mean, uh, thank you. Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I think also, you know, you're talking about a really deep, deep storyline uh, with Green Lantern that, I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's vast worlds. And in a weird way, I remember when when the first one came out and it was kind of like, you know, with my limited knowledge of comic books, it was... How can you tell so vast a story in such a short amount of time? I think it takes time to develop the story. And, you know, I think uh, I think we still have yet to see a proper Green Lantern on the screen. Mm -hmm. Although I'm looking at a proper Green Lantern right now. On a screen. So, on a screen. See? On see? A screen. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what's cool, too, is, uh, you know, Zach even talked about, I mean, going back to Ryan Reynolds. And it's funny, too, because Ryan has always joked about the Snyder Cut and even joked about certain. And then all of a sudden, Zach kind of goes, well, yeah, I mean, I, I, if I had to use a Hal Jordan, I probably would have used him eventually yeah. later on. So, Wayne, I mean, there's a if, if we get some sequels and some li things line up, I mean, you could be. We want to see. I, I would actually love to see a, a a buddy cop movie style Green Lantern with you and Ryan Reynolds. I, I mean, you know, I, that was part of the thing back in the day, wasn't it? Yeah. People were always talking about that, you know, before. So yeah. that would be great. Yes, I mean that's yeah. when somebody brought up that that it was like Lethal Weapon in space. It was like, yeah, <laughs> that's what they should do with this. And I think, you know, I mean, you already got. An actor right here that I mean when like I like I, I'll go back to when Zach sees something and someone is like yes this is what should happen right here so I mean and then just like it like like Ray said dive into the myth the mythos of uh, Green Lantern and and in the character of John Stewart a lot of people actually prefer him more than Hal just because of the military yeah, background. You know, that all depends right on like who you were raised on like yeah. you know what I mean like most of the people that I've talked to are like early 2000s, you know, Justice League. So, of course, John Stewart kind of like was the guy in that little pocket. And so it's so interesting, you know, and they're, the, you know, yeah, everybody has their favorite, which I think is, you know, it's valid. But No, it's it's totally valid. I mean, I mean I've always, it, I never got really big into like Green Lantern. I always grew up on Batman, obviously, with all the millions of Batman things you see around here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you're a Batman fan too. Same so as well, yeah. yeah. See, we're all, this is why we're here, guys. Let's just talk about Batman for less of time. Who cares about the screen? Okay, why not? <laughs> yeah. No, but like, uh, yeah, I mean, but, you know, I, I just see a lot of people just go, you know, because of the polar opposites of Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart, you know, Hal's more, he's a little more messy, sarcastic, he's, you know, and then you got the military guy who's like, I want to make the world a better place, and, you know, there's just a good, there's a good dynamic there that they need to just tap into when it comes to the, the characters of that, and I think, I think Zach was going to do that somewhat and hopefully hope for the best, but you know, Warner brothers, those guys, yeah, those guys. But, um, I actually have a, a fan question right here that I'm going to bring up right now. Uh, one of my, uh, Patreons who, uh, you know, he's always, uh, submitting questions and stuff like that. It's from Darren. He wanted to ask you, and I think Ray, you can actually, uh, help with this answer too. So here we go. Hey, what's going on, Dave? What's going on, Wayne? Um, my question is what advice would you give, to somebody that wants to break into the entertainment industry, like acting. All right, there we go. <laughs> there we are. There first we thing, are. First thing I was going to say is take a class. Unfortunately, Wayne is a teacher. <laughs> yeah. I Taking am. Wayne's classes. There Darren, you call me. Uh, uh, no, but but for real. Um, you know, breaking in is, is kind of a, a funny, a funny term, 
because yeah. that kind of implies that you're going to like knock down a door and you're going to be in the thing. But it's it's a process with everything. So uh, like like Ray Porter was saying, you know, you, you want to take a class. First thing, you know, get into a class that's reputable. Ask for advice. Talk to people who know people. I don't know necessarily where you're located, Darren, but um, see how you feel in a class. See what kind of response you get from an acting teacher and your fellow actors who are in that class and then go from there. Because as soon as you put yourself in a class, you're gonna start your network and then it builds from there. And, and so breaking breaking in, it's kind of like, it's like- so you, you, make, you make a really solid point, Wayne. It isn't breaking in. It's, you know, how how do I walk upright through this 10 foot wall of jello? Yeah. yeah. And keep going. And keep going. Yeah. yeah. I've broken in probably five, six times at this point. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> so yeah. yeah. It's not a, and yeah, what you said is totally right. I mean, a reputable class and ask and, you know, do plays, do plays wherever you're living, do plays. Yeah. Then you've broken in, uh, you know, you're performing, you're, you're getting out there and moving your body around and saying those words and doing that. That's how you start and keep, then keep going, you know? And you guys, uh, you guys are part of the the Shakespeare Festival, right? You guys have been part of that, or yeah, or but not at the same, not at the same time, right? No, I left just before uh, Wayne came in. Yeah, hmm. before Wayne and Ray came in. Yep. Oh, okay. So just before, man, just just that little bit of time, but just missed it. Just yeah. mi missed it. Uh, Wayne, what 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 has been like? What was one of your favorite plays that you did that you've done? Oh man, that's. Uh, yeah, it, it always that's a, the toughest question that people will ask. You yeah, know, I figured yeah. because we fall in love with it, whatever it is that we're doing at that time, and it, and everything has a special place in your heart. And a lot of actors that I know will say, "Well, the last play that I did," uh, and and that that's not necessarily the case for me. But um, one of my favorites uh, was um, was not a Shakespeare. It was an August Wilson. I did Seven mm -hmm. Guitars, and oh, wow. it was my 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 one professional opportunity to do an August Wilson and it it rocked my world. It was it was awesome. Nice. And uh, uh, Ray, what what about you? I've always I think I maybe I've asked that. I don't think I've asked you that. Is there anything that ever stood out? No, you it is. You know, pretty you much. One. Huh? <laughs> you got to choose one. <laughs> yeah, just oh, one. no. I can't. Just one. Um, seven guitars. No, it wasn't. Even that. <laughs> um, yeah, it's like. Picking children, yeah. Speaking of which, I think August Wilson, I, I can make a solid case for August Wilson being our modern day American Shakespeare. Nice. Um, some of the greatest language written and some of the best encapsulations of the human heart uh, were expressed by August Wilson. And I, and I really do think that time will tell, but he will be regarded. Uh, he's already one of the greats, but I think he will be regarded as possibly at the very top of the list. Um, amazing, incredible playwright. Um, I've done several plays that I really loved. I've done a lot of productions that I've really loved. Yeah. And sometimes it's not even necessarily about the play. It's about the people that you're working with, or it can be about, you know, what you got to do or what you got to watch your friends do. And, um, or a production you said, there's tons of productions I've seen that I wasn't even in that were my favorite. It's impossible to choose. Um, you know, we're, we're constantly falling in love with whatever job we're doing at the time. And, and you don't want to reject any of those loves when you yeah. look back. And so it's very difficult to choose one. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Like picking a favorite child. It's, you yeah. Can't, yeah. I think you mentioned yeah. it. It's, it's, it's just, you know, that's wrong. It's just not yeah. right. It's so cool. <laughs> but no. you also, you'll, you'll, don't you find like, you'll think about like, oh man, that was a great production. Oh, but then there was this other one I did that was amazing. And, Oh yeah, but then there was this. Other, I mean, it constantly, oh, yeah. there's something to take from from all of it. Absolutely. Yeah, and you know, especially being on stage, and then and then you know, both of you guys strapped on the PJs, and one you know one one of you guys was in a driveway, one of you guys was on an actual set. I mean, it's, I mean, and then you could look at that and be like, wow. I mean, that was a total different experience as well. Well, you know, I wasn't really even on an actual set per se. I was in a yeah. I was in a dark room with. Uh, you know, with boxes to stand on and, and the, you know, because it was all being handled digitally. True. Um, so, although Wayne, I wish you'd been in the golf cart with me and Kieran and Peter in our pajamas, because that was really pretty. 
<laughs> I'm sure, sure it was. Yeah. You have to be in a golf cart, man. See, yes, that's not true. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All wearing a piece. And then I drive myself up a hill to a parking lot. Yes, but Harry Lennox passed by. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get I didn't get to see him. That which oh, was, man. you know. Damn it. God. And that guy, I mean, uh, you know, the fact that, like I said, going back to the whole driveway thing, I mean, I, I mean, I think that's going to be a historical landmark one of these days. Like, hey, it's parts of Zack Snyder Justice League was filmed right here. And Probably. I mean, how great. Yeah. And how great is Harry Lennox uh, in that role of Martian Man? I mean, even though they had to repurpose it. And of course, I think a lot of people were really going, oh, we're going to get that Green Lantern scene, Green Lantern scene. And then it was like, OK, no, but it's repurposed to the Martian Man scene. It was still. Great. And I love the fact that Ben reshot his side of it. Ben looks great. And, you know, it was just an overall great scene. But yeah. we just need to see that scene with you, Wayne. We just I want to really see it. Know. Also, yeah. I mean, honestly, the the uh, the digital artists that had to yeah. resurrect an entire film in a very short amount of time and make it. I mean, you were shooting in the, you're shooting in Zach's driveway. I was recording Dark Side Lines right here in my basically a tent, a blanket fort uh, here at home shows you how much you can achieve with very little. Did anybody see the video that the kids made of a shot yes. by shot reenactment of army of the dead? Yeah. I mentioned that at, right at the start. I, yeah. Amazing. So, amazing. you know, if there's anybody out there trying to like break in, don't wait, look at what you can make with just intent and desire. Well, you I know. mean, just where we are right now. I mean, everybody can do so many amazing things. Yes. Just from like stuff like this. I mean, there's been stuff where I've been, I've, when it comes to VFX, I've looked into, I'm like, man, maybe I should just, I could do something like that. Or, you know, and then, like you said, those kids, how they utilize the bare minimum just to do shot per shot per shot was just so extraordinary. I mean, yes. I mean, it's just, you know, creativity doesn't need a budget or a venue. No. And um, it's it's easy to forget that sometimes, um, you know, and I think I mean, that's, that, you know, it's why I, I want to see it's why I want to see your scene, Wayne, is I want to watch I want to watch you do what you do. You know, I know that it was amazing and I wish I'd been there to see it. You know, obviously the icing on the cake is that a bunch of people get to see it if it's released. And I want that to be released. I want people to see it. But um when you're in the room when you're in that moment you know you're creating and not thinking necessarily about the end result right yeah you're not and and then when you actually see that end result i mean what you know especially what ray saw i mean just to see that you know what they did with dark side just to see him appear in that little you know facetime apocalyptic slab for the first time like that you know and the way that the music is and everything and i can only imagine like you know the music and uh, with you, uh, with you, Wayne, and then of course you'd probably be levitating. I mean, obviously you probably weren't on strings or cables or anything like that, right? They didn't have you on that. There was no cranes or nothing. No, not in the driveway. No, it was. It was, it was <laughs> I'm like, I almost, I almost thought like, was Zach, is Zach that crazy to get like, hey, let's get some people in here to lift this. Guy up. That that would have been dope, but I, I that was probably my best acting in the driveway. It was just kind of like a yeah, yeah. <laughs> And he had a kind of <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and the Oscar for best supporting yes. performance in a driveway goes to thank you. <laughs> Wayne T. Carr. Yes. No, no. I mean, I almost think that Zach would be that crazy. Like that, that there'd be like three guys like that that are like have a, a cable on a tree and they're just like like that. <laughs> Lifting you up now. <laughs> I was like, that's what I wanted to ask too. I forgot to ask you that in the initial. Like, did you actually get, you know? Nothing, huh? No harness. Yeah. No. <laughs> but you did your best, you know. You you knew like, okay, I got to get on my. Were you on your tippy toes? And you kind of just yeah, like you already know. Yeah, this is just yeah, exactly. <laughs> see, this is why we need to see this. We need to see the scene, and then we need to see the behind the scenes of the Definitely scene. Definitely not the behind the scenes. Oh, <laughs> why not? Oh, come Nobody on. wants to see the sausage get made. We no, have, yeah. that's like showing you how to do a magic trick. You don't want uh, to see. That. No, exactly. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, okay, fine, guys. All right. I, I'm just one of those guys that I'm like, I gotta. I want to see how it was made. How it was made. No, we can't see. How I jumped made. off of a box and then I swung a broomstick after <laughs> running my fingers through styrofoam. So nobody needs to see that. <sighs> I'm just see saying. The, see the thing. 
Um, <laughs> I'd like to, I mean, you know, the, this fandom is, is incredible. And when, when they, you know, do what they do with positivity and good intent, I mean, they can achieve some pretty amazing things. So I'm just going to put hashtag release the Wayne T car scene. Well, you know what? Wayne, Wayne uh, you know, there's actually a release the Green Lantern scene that's I've already seen and, out there in the I'll wild. Defer to that. Release yes. the Green Lantern scene. Yes. Uh, we need to. We need to see it. Yeah, we definitely. But only need. if it's finished. Because. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, personally, I want to laugh at you rising, you know, <laughs> on your toes in the baby suit. But no, I see that's, your point. You're I right. See Within this circle, like it, it could be us, right? <laughs> we'll be like, all right, all right, let's watch it, right? But if like the world gets to see that and they see no, me, like, yeah, right, you're right. That's no, not right. Right. no, we'll keep that in house. Yeah, yeah. No, I think, uh, I, mean, I remember when, um, you know, when when Zach had his uh, had the Snyder cut on his on his computer on his laptop. I mean, it was unfinished, unfinished VFX. He didn't want to show Ray, he didn't want to show Ray Fisher the you know, the Snyder cut, even though like he had it without it being completely finished because you know. Ray Fisher is in the same boat as you guys. He's got the PJs on. There was some stuff that got released. Uh, I think like, oh man, I think it was um, a year later where it showed unfinished VFX of him, you know, doing the flying thing and just certain things. And like, yeah, I can understand why Zach was like, no, 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 I can't show you to unless it's actually done. So, I mean, he's one of those, I think he's one of those guys just like, Hey, no, no, we got to like, if we're going to release this, it's got to be a fully finished, it, it, takes away from, it takes away from the magic a little bit. Yeah. You don't need the magic of it because you, you see kind of how the trick is done. And then when you actually see the finished product, all you're thinking about is what you saw before and not necessarily exactly. magic in front of you. So that's why you don't necessarily want to see that stuff so much. Yeah, I think it's just uh, when it comes to me, I'm all I, I like how I'd like to see how the sausage is made, like uh, like you were saying, Ray. Um, I do not. I do not. <laughs> I think. I mean, I, th I think that, that that a lot of people, you know, do or or have an interest in that sort of thing. It's why documentaries, you know, the making of and that sort of stuff is always yeah. so popular. But if you notice in those documentaries and the making of and all of that, it's not four and a half hours long while they're adjusting a light. It's yeah. two seconds of somebody in one of those baby suits moving. You know, usually over music and all of that, so you get a glimpse of how the sausages are made. Yeah. But uh, Wayne's absolutely right. You 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 take away from the trick. Yeah, I mean, I think yeah. I, anytime that I see like a behind the, especially with like these huge movies, anytime I see the behind the scenes, and I'm going, what what exact? I mean, God, I mean, it, it does kind of look a little ridiculous. Like what's going on? And then all of a sudden, you see it on the big screen, and it's just oh. There it is right there. That, I mean, that's just one of the things that I, I think just me personally, I like to see, I, I, I like to see like how you got to the point of this. And again, I mean, even with the V, uh, there's been VFX reels that have been released that have shown how S Snyder uh, achieved some of his shots. And it's like, man, that guy can utilize so much, so much with so little, as you saw, Wayne, I mean, literally in his driveway, in his driveway. And he, I'm sure the scene that he shot with you in its finished form is going to be just like epic. And if it was seen in a theater, people would have went cheered their asses off because, hey, a, a live action John Stewart Green Lantern, what the hell? Give me more. Yeah. That's what we're trying to achieve here. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, like that's, yeah, it would have been extremely exciting, I think, for for the fans and also for the story. Yeah. Uh, we, we we had a, a glimpse of, of Marsh Man Hunter in, in, in the scene. Um, yeah. And, uh, it, it, you know, like getting to the end and having a new character introduced, of course, that the fans know to say, hey, I got some information for you that uh, you may not know, but this isn't done. Yes, because there's so many questions. So yeah. Many questions. Like, wh where, where has this guy been this whole time? You know, That's, that was my question. Yeah. I was like, John Johns, man, come yeah. on, man. Well, also, can you think of a greater impetus for people to then want JL2 and JL3 if they see a glimpse of the Green Lantern at the end foreshadowing what's coming? People are like, all right, let's go, which makes me think a little bit, you know, maybe that's why 
the powers that be uh, <laughs> said no. It's like don't leave them wanting too much more. You know, yeah. we you know. Yeah, yeah, we 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 all we've all read that that uh, cul de sac thing, right? You know, yes. what I mean? that they, so mm -hmm. they wanted to wrap things up. So yeah, yeah, it's it's hard to understand. It really is. Yeah. Pre preach on, brother. Preach on. I mean, I mean, seriously. Every, I mean, so many people have just been. Hashtag, res I mean, I, I I keep going back to it. I, I was screaming into the heavens, Brad Paisley. Brad Paisley, guys, 5 million followers. He's a country star. He does, you know, commercials with <laughs> Peyton Manning. He tweeted out, ha uh, hashtag restore the Snyderverse. I mean, <laughs> I, I will never stop talking about that. And then <laughs> Leslie, you know the Leslie Jones com commentary. Which I think they should oh put out God. a special edition DVD with her commentary. Did it you see was, that, Wayne? Did you no. watch it at all? Leslie, Leslie Jones. Oh my God. You, Leslie you Jones went on Twitter under the hashtag long ass movie <laughs> and literally videoed herself watching the film. So just a shot of the screen and her yelling at the movie <laughs> for the length of the movie. It is some of the funniest stuff I've ever heard. She's hilarious, man. Oh, I, man. I, can I find that? I can find that, of course. Right? Yeah, you you find it on find it on uh, YouTube. Okay. Yeah, just do like a people Leslie have, Jones people just have put it together. together. Or yeah, oh. or you can go to her Twitter. Yeah, it was it was probably like a day or two, maybe a night or two after it came out. It was like right after it came out. Yeah. yeah, and she just, I mean, it's hilarious, and she was enjoying the absolute shit out of the movie. And yeah. it was just just some of the most hilarious commentary you, you you've heard. I mean, the jokes and everything, and it's just like holy amazing. And then I'm gonna bring in a, a buddy who actually, you know, knows. You know, Ray knows. Um, and then uh, Wayne, you're going to get introduced to my friend Scott. How's it going, Scott? It's going just it's going fine. I feel like I've seen you recently. I don't know why. Who, me? Oh, yeah, that's right. We did a stream just like, uh, you know, two hours ago. That's right. <laughs> Hi, Ray. How you doing, man? Good, man. How are you? Uh, yeah. Hey, Wayne, you know, you know, when you're doing Shakespeare, you have a dramaturg? Yes. That'd be Scott. That'd be Scott. That's why I brought, that's why I was like, Scott, you want to join? You know, he's he's the guy. He knows. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry. I have to take this moment, but my friend just dropped this off when we were done, and I thought Ray, you'd appreciate this. Oh, oh, oh I love it. <laughs> and I am. I've got audio books that I'm running behind on right now. That's that. I love that. Is that going in your classroom? Yes, it is. Fantastic. <laughs> Uh, which, by the way, I cannot wait for Project Hail Mary to come out. I've already got it pre-ordered. Uh, so, it was Andy Weir, and then I saw you were reading it. And I was like, <laughs> I was so excited to, to get to money. narrate. I was so happy to get to narrate an Andy Weir book. That was amazing. It was such a good book, too. It was really well, good fun. Good because I, I, I paid for it, so I'm ready for it. <laughs> but and there, and there may or may not be more um, Neil Gaiman Sandman things occurring. Ooh. Ooh, there it is. Ooh. So, right there. Uh, so Wayne, just so you know, the Leslie Jones thing, it was the Sunday after the Sunday night. So if it came out on, it was the, God, the 18th, it was yeah. Thursday, the 18th. So 1920, uh, March 21st, you look at oh, that right. evening and it's just like, oh, thank you. G oh, thank you, Lord. I think, look at those shoulders. <laughs> Look at the shoulders of oh, the Lord with him. Just watch she it. Just, just, after just, Henry just watch her. So hard. I oh, fell man. out. I watched. Oh, I think I, one, like, of the, one of the yeah. the movie through yeah. her eyes. It was. It's 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 amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, she talks about like Superman, you know, recycling when she hits cyborg. It's like stuff like that. Recycling cans. And stuff. Okay. I mean, <laughs> just yeah, just watch it. It's you're in for a treat, Wayne. Great. You're in for a treat. You're, oh. you're gonna love it. But, yeah. Uh, well, how I missed that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you just recently joined Twitter. That's true. Right. Yeah. So, and please, everybody follow Wayne on Twitter. Just type in Wayne T. Carr. Follow him on Twitter. You've actually got a pretty significant. I mean, I saw like your your following went pew, as, she, as soon as people were like, "Hey, that's the guy!" Bam. Yeah, it yeah. jumped quickly, man. Yeah. How does how did that feel? Like just you know now. I mean, you were on Facebook, you're on Instagram, and then you just joined Twitter, and all of a sudden it was just like, whoa! Look at all this love. Yeah, man, that's what uh, DC fandom will do, right? You know what I mean? Like, it was it was overwhelming, absolutely. Yeah, and then uh, you know, obviously with your teaching and stuff like that, Scott's a teacher too. So, yeah. I mean, uh, Scott, you said you have a question that you were going to say. I don't know if I have. I just I, 
I'm, I'm just here to meet Wayne because he just seems like such a genuinely nice guy. It's so wonderful. What are you talking about? I haven't gotten that from him. So <laughs> I mean, just the way you present. Once again, it's just like everyone that we've ever gotten to that we 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 fans get to meet. It's just the way you guys just purport yourselves and. And you're just you're always so welcoming and nice and gracious and well spoken and it's it just it makes it easy to be a fan of you guys because of how you you just you just act and present yourselves and then the way that you're so gracious when we like totally like you no know, nerd out and like get I excited. Yeah. I, I I'm sorry, it, it's it's a cliche, but I had to go there. <laughs> But it's just nice. I, I did actually have a question because I, I will admit I missed the beginning of the stream. So maybe you've already you already answered. I'm going to kick you out. It's fine. Oh, well, you know, yeah, you know, You're family, to Dave. Yeah, okay. Family. Okay, I'll let I'll let it slide. I'll let it slide. Go I ahead. was just kind of curious when you when you were cast in the role for that period of time, mm -hmm. did you get any opportunity to do any kind of research? It sounded like you were at least aware of. Uh, at least like Phil Lamar and the and the animated series, yeah. but what oh. kind of but what if Phil any Lamar, so great yeah. uh, what if any uh, research did you get to do in a brief period of time? Most of my research, to be honest with you, came after the fact. Mm. Like I thought, I, I thought if if this happens, I should you know uh, uh, I should know where I want to go with this because it was it was quick. Mm -hmm. It was really, really, I wish I can give you a time frame. I don't remember. It was last summer, but I want to say something like Ray Fisher contacted me in July saying that Zach wanted to talk to me. He told me, you know, told him about me, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it may, maybe was a month total from Ray talking to me to me being in Zach's driveway with, with the baby suit on. Right. <laughs> and, and and the first two weeks of that, I was like, "What is what's going on?" What, uh, and I didn't I didn't necessarily question it too much because I was yeah. like, "It's my buddy Ray. Uh, uh, he's talking about Zach and completing his vision and doing what he wants to do. I'm here to help in any way that I can." All right, cool, great. And then I get fitted for the baby suit, and I'm like. Oh, okay. I get a baby suit, and I remember calling Ray and saying, "Hey, I'm gonna get to wear the uh, the PJs like you wore. This is gonna be awesome." <laughs> and uh, and so in the meantime, I'm um, I'm on the set of another movie, so I'm working a lot, which was great during that time. Nice. And um, and 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 then it just kind of like happened. So the research was very very yeah. minimal. Yeah. yeah. Wikipedia, you're like, oh, oh yeah, okay, so I see. Yeah. Wikipedia, the, the the animated series, you know, I had seen um, bits and pieces before, uh, but I watched that whole thing, and then yeah, that was that was the beginning. Okay, um, being an English teacher, I can't help but recommend reading. Ray has unfortunately been on the receiving end of some <laughs> of this. Awesome. Um, I could definitely recommend Cosmic Odyssey. Hmm. That is definitely something. A lot of dark side, a lot of fourth world, and a lot of John Stewart. If you've not already yeah. read it, that's definitely something to check out. Absolutely, There's absolutely, right there, man. And and I and I've done I've done my bit for Queen and Country. I I can I can sit back now. <laughs> <You're satisfied. laughs> Recommended a book. I'm good. <laughs> I've done what I can. Nice. <laughs> you're doing what I can. Um, Wayne, you mentioned that you were on a a set. Is where you probably can't talk too much about that. No man, I can talk. I can talk about. It. I think. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, I was. I was. I um. I was on the uh, Macbeth set. Oh, okay. Uh, Cohen movie that I think he's going to re try to release in the theaters, um, in September maybe if things, you know, happen. So yeah. Nice. I worked out. How long? How long uh, were you on that set for? Uh, well, we started in the beginning of January. We got shut down in March, and then uh, I think. Macbeth was like one of the first major films that kind of came back with the whole COVID protocol and everything. Wow. So we were getting tested every day, just about sometimes, well, twice a day sometimes. And um, yeah, and we finished it up in the middle of the summer. And Who were you? At that time of kind of like finishing up that film, Ray's calling me saying, hey, you want to put on some PJ? Zach, wants to talk to you. <laughs> what, is, what is this? So yeah, it was, it was, it who was. Are you, uh, who are you playing in Macbeth? 
Um, I was I was the Shakespeare consultant. That was my main job. So I okay. got to talk to all the actors about fantastic the and the wow. Lucky for them. Yeah, it was dope, man. It was so it was lucky for me. It was great to like help people along the process. And then they um, and then I was murderer number three. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you missed the kid. I'm sorry. Like you, you kind of, you kind of messed down your job. I'm just saying. You've read the play, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I brought Scott in, Wayne. Of like, course, he has. He's, no, he's giving away the story, Scott. <laughs> Don't give away the story. I, I mean, I'm. If if it's fair to say, it's been around for four hundred <laughs> years. I'm. And so yet, no spoilers lovely. exactly. <laughs> Dark Side's been around for fifty, and I didn't read about him until after I'd shot him. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I love that. All right, oh, so we're yeah. looking, forward looking forward to that. I, I'm, I'm still, still waiting, waiting for, for a really strong. I mean, there there are Macbeth films that are. I feel like. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. I always love when a new Macbeth film comes out because it was my favorite tragedy uh, growing up. So I, I always, every time a, a film version of Macbeth comes out, I'm, I'm like on pins and needles going, is this going to be the one that's like the full package for me personally? And so I'm excited. Yeah. I have a theory about the, you know, the whole mythology about it being a bad luck play and, you know, and all of this other stuff. My theory is that it, like Twelfth Night, is hardly ever done correctly. And the reason why people say it's bad luck is because they won't accept that they did it wrong. <laughs> you know, it's it's it is deceptively difficult, I think, to properly do that play. Mm -hmm. uh. And so to have someone like you, Wayne, in there helping consulting, with, yeah, consulting and doing that is a stroke of genius because you need that. That's vital uh, to the thing, you know, but I mean, would you agree with me? I don't know, Wayne. I mean, I think 12th night is so popular and I have yet to see a production of it where I've been like, yes. Yeah. No, it's, it's extremely, yeah. I it's mean, deceptively difficult is it all really I'm saying. Is. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully, hopefully this uh, version who, uh, who is directing it again? Uh, I think you, Cohen. who? Joel Cohen. Joko, oh, that's Whoa. going to be damn good. <laughs> yeah, that, that that's that's yeah. One half of the Cohen brothers. Yes, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, they they have a little, you know, they know kind of what they're doing, you know, those 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 brothers. So yeah, hopefully there's going to be something. I'm getting my murder or three T-shirt ready. Yeah. For, <laughs> for when it comes out, I'm gonna be. I'll be going. To, I'll cosplay you at cons. Uh, <laughs> yes, that'll be great. <laughs> oh man is there uh wayne when it when it comes to uh types of movies that you like uh that you've seen recently or anything besides Zack snyder's justice league which of course was awesome anything else that has been like like that stuck out with you and or, or anything oh man uh there's so much i mean i i just i love movies right yeah. so i love i love i love stories i love storytelling mm -hmm. so it's kind of it's kind of hard to pick it's it's like picking your favorite play and things like that. Like I'm not I'm not the type of fan who are, who's like, oh, this is what I like. This is my genre. This is I love it all, and I'm excited for a lot of uh, a lot of things that are coming up. I'm excited for Army of the Dead. I'm yeah, excited. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like um, so, and you know, a lot of movies I can't watch. My wife is probably listening in the other room. Uh oh, like, <laughs> she doesn't she doesn't like the horror stuff. Anything. Oh no. Like gory or whatever so i have to watch that on my own when she's not around so, <laughs> underneath the comforter with your you know with your phone like I'm yeah like, well, she can't, she can't know and i'm watching know. yeah no army of the dead i mean especially with the uh the recent they finally were able to release the uh the set visits from from that and just the interviews with zach interview with dave batista all those people and i mean everybody that went to that set i mean same thing i mean <laughs> How, how how when it comes to people talking about Zack Snyder, they just go, yeah, he just has this energy and he just knows exactly what he wants, you know. And when it comes to this zombie epic, I mean, you've seen the trailer, you've heard the interview. I mean, just the way that he's going to approach the zombie genre in such a different form. I mean, yeah, he got his feet wet when it came to Dawn of the Dead, and mm -hmm. he made zombies even scarier because he's like, hey, we're going to make them run like a lot. 
they're going to run, not just, oh, they're going to be running. And now they're actually going to be in this quarantine space where they're going to have hierarchies and they're going to be developing abilities and there's alpha zombies and there's, and there's fucking tigers, yeah. <laughs> tiger, tiger zombies, there's tiger horses. I mean, yeah. the, the man just goes, he just, the, I, to be in that guy's head, I can, I, I can't even imagine, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. He pushes the creativity, man. And he's, he's, he's bold and, and brave with his choices, which I love. I absolutely love. Yeah. I mean, when he just like, and like you said, Wayne, when like he was explaining and just coming up with lines, I mean, that's just, that's, that's vintage. I mean, just him just going like, Hey, I, I imagine him saying this and I tried to like this and this like this and just the energy that just pours out. I'm sure yeah. just kind of just, you just probably just soaked it in and went, yeah, let's do it just like that. Yeah. yeah <laughs> that's what happens on a set though. You're doing the thing and you'll hear Zach say, okay, okay. Now try say this. <laughs> you have the same experience, right? Wayne. Yep. Yeah. The camera's rolling on you and you say the line. He's like, okay, now say this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. And you do. And, um, awesome. it's very, it's funny because for someone who has everything so meticulously and wonderfully planned out, he's so spontaneous and so loose about, you know, try this and try this. And, you know, it's, I think it's, he has that structure. So he has a sandbox to just go completely crazy in in the middle of all of it. I mean, it, it's such a joy just being on a set with him. Yeah. I mean, and that's the thing. It's like, if there's going to be a justice league two or three, it's like, yeah, now we're going to have more and more characters. We're going to have the lanterns because I mean, one of the things that a lot of people, when they're um, they're um, you know, when everybody was kind of going, how much green lantern is going to be in this? Mm -hmm. I mean, when he released that shirt, I think it was end of 2019 and it was, it said Zack Snyder's Justice League. And then it had all the emblems like on the sleeves and there was a green lantern symbol and everybody's going, okay, what the, f hold on, wait, there's a green, there's supposed to be a green lantern. And everybody was going, oh, who's Hal Jordan? Who's Hal Jordan? And then it was like, no, 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 no. Zack wanted John Stewart guys. He wanted John Stewart, you know? And I mean, we've talked about it many times in the Vox stream, Scott, where it was just like, we were kind of just, you know, who was going to be that. And then, you know, just <laughs> less than a month ago, all of a sudden we're hearing about, Hey, who's this Wayne T car guy? Bam. And here you are. And yeah, right. I mean, I'm talking about, I mean, like hopefully with, with the whole restore the Snyderverse, I mean, who knows what's going to happen. Um, I would like to see, I mean, I'm, I have, I'm surprised there hasn't been um, any kind of like uh fan art that has you and Ryan Reynolds, like right next to each other. I'm well, sure be in about a half an hour now that you've said yeah, it. So right. I'm, you that's what that I'm trying existence, to right. do, Ray. I'm trying to put it out there in the ether. I'm no, like, people are going to be too busy <laughs> typing out hashtag release the green lantern scene yes. to draw anything. I've, I got to Wayne. I got a question because you said you love movies, so I'm kind of curious. Like, what are the genres that you just gravitate toward, and maybe also other genres that you would love to find yourself in future projects doing as an actor? Like I said, it goes. It, it's 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 all over the map because I'll have my you know I would say my, my art film moments. You know, mm -hmm. I'll have my moments of like okay, I just want to see some action. You know what I mean and. Uh, you know, one of my, my favorite actors, Denzel Washington, is like, I, I just want to see him in Equalizer. I just want to see yes. him. Yes. You don't need to like, okay. any, like crazy, you know, you know, drama story. I just want to see him fight some people who did some bad stuff. Like, that's all I want, right? And so I go through my, you know, it, it's really all over the map. And so a lot of the things that he, he, he does and he's done throughout his career, I'm like, yes, awesome. So that's just an actor who chooses things that I'm like, yeah, that, so she, that's dope. There's something about Denzel where it's like, no matter what he's in, he, I mean, he's, he just, I mean, you can literally, just how you can say, you, you know, Google it, he Denzels it. I mean, there's something like this, the, this, even down to his walk, that strut that he has, that signature Denzel strut, which never gets old, never gets old. And I love the fact that, you know, his son, you know, John David, I mean, he also kind of has a little bit of that too. Like when you saw Tenet, you're like, "Oh, I'm seeing a little bit of uh, I'm seeing a little bit of dad in you right there." 
coming off. I mean, you're leading man now. Look at you. You're 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 summoning some of uh, father right there. Good for you. I mean, that's, that's what good. you. It's in his blood, man. It's in his blood. Oh, totally in his blood. But yeah, I mean, there's just something about Denzel. Like, no matter what, I mean, the movie, whatever, however it's perceived, you you always kind of go. Yeah, but Denzel was, you know, he was still fucking great. And whether he's kicking ass or it's something like Training Day where he's just, you know, doing the full on Denzel thing. I mean, my God. And the guy's just, uh, yeah, whatever he has to offer, we all want to see it. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you, one of the hidden gems I feel like none of people talk about is, uh, Dwayne, do you remember the movie Fallen? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. I, about angels I love and stuff? that yeah. movie. I yeah. love that movie. And there, and I can never hear that song without just being a little creep. <laughs> oh man, I, I that's that's always my thing. It's always like finding those movies that the actors have done. That's like, dude, I loved that movie when I saw it. Why don't enough people remember th that movie? Because that was good. It was with John Goodman, and oh, it was, and it, it was Eli uh, Elias um, Elias. Co oh, I can never pronounce his last. Cotillas, yes, he he was in that because he was one of the first. He, he was like the guy who was in jail, and like just seeing them play. I think that's those are the kind of scenes I like to see in movies. Is just when you get two actors in a room and they just play off each other, and you just let the camera roll. That's yeah. that's when you know that you're watching something special. Well, even with the little things that just came out with Denzel and Jared Leto and uh, Rami Malek, I mean, you know, I mean, it was. When it when it got to that point where they were all three in that interrogation room, that's where things really shined. Uh, did you see that, Wayne? Did you see the little things? Absolutely. Yes, Ray. Did Wonderful. you see it? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, that scene right there. I mean, especially with Leto, just being, I mean, Leto being Leto and just being that creepa. I mean, that scene right there was that kind of took it home for me where I was going, okay, that scene is the scene that you talk about when you, when you talk about this movie, when the three main characters are in this room and they're talking to the guy and just the way that Leto was just on the other side of them. And uh, yeah, I mean, God damn more of that, please. But yeah. is there anything else that anything else that you guys have watched recently that kind of like sticks out that that we should nerd about. Yeah, I, I, we were just just on the topic of uh, of Denzel. One of the movies that I love is uh, Roman Israel, which not many people have seen. Yes. You know, uh, mm -hmm. partially because it was like I guess not what people know him as. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it was really well received. But his performance in that rocked me, man. It rocked yeah. me. Yeah, it was so you 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 typically, and that's what I. That's what actors love. I mean, like the actors that I love anyway, they love to transform and he transformed in that. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Definitely did. And even recently, I think even a couple of months ago where, you know, because when I talk about Restore the Snyderverse, I always go, ah, there's this whole story they, they can explore with the whole nightmare sequence and the wasteland and the post-apocalyptic uh, um, world. And, you know, I went on a binge of watching Book of Eli and fury road and book of eli just doesn't get mentioned enough either when it's like come on this is a, a denzel movie that more people need to talk about because it's it's just absolutely phenomenal and i'm like yeah please people talk more about this movie because i don't know i don't know you know i don't know if you guys you know know much about the Macbeth movie that that uh joel is is doing but not so much. when okay so denzel washington is playing mac yeah mm. And so it was a dream come true to be able to do Shakespeare with one of my idols, right? It was it was amazing. But then another person mm -hmm. in, in in the uh, in the movie, Frances McDormand, is playing oh. Lady, and she's one of my favorites. Also, oh, she's <laughs> Lady. Anne. I was kind of like blown away. I was like, I get to work with Denzel and Frances McDormand. Come on, man! Holy and, shit! And then in the middle of all of that. My friend Ray calls me and says, Zack Snyder wants to talk to you. I was like, what is my life right now? <laughs> it's been wow. a good year. So, so basically, yeah. so you're consulting on this. You're with Denzel and Francis. And then, yeah. yeah. Wow. That's, I mean, day one, what are you thinking? Like, what's what's going on? How much? You probably got, what, like two hours sleep that night before? Or what was what was the feeling like? Yeah, that, that this I mean it's not a, even a long story. It can be, but 
here's basically what you won what. Okay. I got a call from my agent said that Francis McDormand wants to talk to you. And I was like, they're giving me a part in the movie? Great, you know, because I auditioned for bigger parts in the in the film, and and I thought, well, this is a good way for me to introduce myself to Hollywood because Shakespeare is what I've done professionally for a long time, mm -hmm. and uh, I go in, and basically she's like, so we need help doing the rehearsal process, and we need you know people to fill in because there are a lot of actors in England who can't come over quite yet, and we need to what? So anyway, I ended up helping out that day. Denzel comes into her office a half hour later and she's like, he's like, oh, so this is the guy? This is the, this is the guy you're talking about? And, and, and <laughs> I'm sitting there like, uh, is this really happening? Denzel's right here, Francis. Right here. Okay. Uh, and they're like, so do you mind, would you mind staying for rehearsal? We're starting, we're starting rehearsal today. And so I worked the first day. I didn't sign a contract. I didn't do anything. I just started working, right? January 11, 2020. I'll never forget it. Ever. Amazing. Wow. wow. Yeah. So when you were talking about being a consultant or helping out, was it with, like with the iambic pentameter? Was it just with the history of the characters? Like what was kind of your, what was like your list of duties kind of as the Shakespearean consultant? It was, it was all of the above, all of the things that you're saying, you know, so I, I worked as kind of like a dramaturg. I worked uh, assisting the voice and text person, which was Kate Wilson. Uh, I helped, I filled in for actors, which was also kind of cool because I was just like, <laughs> I get to act. This is what I love to do. Oh, crap. I'm acting, I'm acting up to Denzel right now. Oh, man. Stop sweating. Stop sweating and just do the thing. All right, cool. Great. And I did the thing and I was like, whew, all right. Uh, so I did a little bit of everything. I organized the rehearsals a little bit. Um, I assisted in whatever way I possibly could. My, my job was basically to be of service to the production. Dude. And I think that's, and I think going back to Darren's question earlier, I think that's another thing that people need to understand is the amount of reputation and goodwill you engender just by w just being Johnny on the spot and being willing to go, what, what can I do to help the production? And that goes, it, it, it maybe it doesn't pay what you supposedly think it should, or maybe you don't get your name and some credit but you build a reputation with people who are going to help you get that next job. And I think that's Absolutely. incredibly important that that gets communicated. Absolutely. I mean, that, that's a hard lesson to learn also. I think some people are born with that naturally. Uh, uh, Ray Fisher is one of those people I think is like that. He's just a genuine person. You know what I mean? He comes in, he's really friendly with everyone and he just wants to like make art which is great. Yeah. And he wants to help you however he possibly can. And, and, and it's great. And people, people pick up on that. He's one of those, Ray's one of those kind of people like you meet him and you might go, is, is he real? Is, is this, is he being serious? And he is. <laughs> that's, that's he is. He's just that, he's that nice. He's that cool. Which is no, why we're friends. Yeah. It seems like that. I mean, how long ago did you guys meet again? It's been eight years now. Yeah. 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 And, and yeah, he just seems like, I mean, he just seems like one of those genuine guys. Like you said, he just has a charisma to him. I mean, even with the stuff that's happening right now, which of course, you know, we're all, we all support. That's why we got the hashtag. I stand with Ray Fisher. I mean, obviously, I mean, we're not going to of course dive too much into that, but you know, I mean, that's why we do it because he just seems like that. And I think, I think even Zach, when he cast him was going, Hey, you know, there's this, this is the guy, this is who's going to be the heart of my movie. You know, and he said that time and time again. And when he watched the movie, I mean, there's so many. I mean, when you when you get into that part three and it's, uh, you know, beloved mother, beloved son. I mean, it's just ugh, everything about his little backstory. His backstory yeah. is just it just hits you right in the feels. I mean, with the football scene and the fact when he sees like his dad's not there and everything. And then of course the car crash and everything that comes after that. I mean, that's where, I mean, when you see his face, when he's trying to hold back tears, ah, that's what we just love about his uh, performance. Who, you know, who can't relate to that? You know what exactly. I mean? That's part of the, the great thing about that role and, and that part of the movie. There's a lot of things that are happening throughout the film where it's like, okay, that's kind of crazy and fantastical. We can still get on board. We get what's going on and that's cool. But when you get to like just real human issues 
and then put the superhero stuff on top of that, it just makes it, it, it expands. It expands in a different way. Yeah, I think more filmmakers, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, you can have the popcorn fun and be like, and do this, that, and this, but then when you actually inject some of that in there, that those real feels and the real, the real world kind of situations or whatever, and and uh, I think Snyder really, with, with anything that he approaches, he, he, he always is like, you know, about the why of everything. You know, he, he's expressed that many times. What's the why? Why is Superman? Why does Superman need to be Superman? Or why does Batman need to be Batman? Why does his Justice League need to like come together? I mean, there's I mean, that's when it comes down to. And I love the fact that he him and Deborah have both said it where it's just like the why of everything, the why. And that's where you really get, you know, you get down to the nitty gritty of these uh, characters. Yeah, they could do fantastical stuff. But why? You know, what makes them do all this? You know, it's just and that's what I think he pretty much, you know, nailed when it came to his Justice League. And that's why we just can't stop watching it. So, Wayne, so why? Why John Stewart? What's, what's John Stewart's <laughs> why? The, the, like, OK, what 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 was your Stan Slavsky? Like, what was the what the backstory you had written down? Like, what, where where was that coming from, man? I'm just. Yeah. Did, I, he I'm kinda... give you, did he give you the why of why is he showing up to Bruce Wayne's house? Or was it just PJ's go? <laughs> That's what he told Ray. He told PJ's go. PJ's go. <laughs> There's a hashtag right there or a shirt. PJ's go. Anyway. <laughs> Anyways, sorry, Wayne. Go ahead. No, no, man. Like, like it's it's um there there's so many ways to tackle that. And I wish I have a an opportunity to tackle it in the future, but um we all know, you know, the, the, the Green Lantern thing and that's uh, will, willpower. Right. And yeah. so like, you know, we all battle with that. We all struggle with that. And sometimes we master it and sometimes we don't. And it's the, the, the ups and downs of that, that, and the, the, the tackling of it that I think is the exciting thing to me about this individual and what his, what his desires are, what he's trying to accomplish and using his will to do that, whatever that may be. There it is. Yeah. Like I said, there, there's so much, uh, you know, there's so much mythos when it comes to the John Stewart Green Lantern. And, you know, I hope that it can be explored more because people are craving it. People are absolutely craving it. And, you know, Zach fought for it too. I mean, he's talked about fighting for it as well. And then, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that where he was uh, – that he was uh, going to do it. But, uh, you know, I, I think we're going to actually probably wrap this up. I know, Scott, you have to go too. And, uh, you know, I want to take it uh, too much of everybody's time. So uh, I think we'll. What, a, what, a, what an absolute privilege to come and sit with you a bit, Wayne. Yeah. You know? yeah absolutely. You know? I mean, yeah. When I was like, I was thinking about, when I was thinking about this whole interview, I'm like, oh, I'm going to hit up Ray and see. I was like, hey, you know who Wayne T. Carr is, right? Yeah, <laughs> damn right I do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now more people do. That's what's Absolutely. so great about this. Mm -hmm. And like I said, guys, I mean, hashtag restore the Snyderverse. Hashtag release the Green Lantern scene, and hopefully we release can... the Green Lantern scene. Yes, we need to see damn this right. in action. I mean, like you know, time and time again, we'll say it. Like Zach knows he has he has you know he's tapped into when he casts people he knows yeah. how to do it and then uh, we want to see more uh, Wayne T Car Green Lantern hopefully That's we straight. can and hey so, man uh, let's do a play yeah yes. that do it. I'd love that please please we'll do it right here just like this <laughs> yes. <laughs> what a perfect idea <laughs> vodka stream repertory <laughs> theater presents wayne's like nope 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 no it's gotta be fit yeah no i'm with wayne i'm like no we could we could talk about it afterwards like this but no yeah. we, we want to do it physically on a state yeah we would we, we, we talk about I'm, characters I'm here. in search of a background <laughs> i mean I'm, I'm here like i i i can i can i can, I can play guys put me yeah. in coach put, put me, me in coach tight. give me a chance <laughs> Gentle puck, come hither. Thou remembers from once I sat upon a promontory and heard a mermaid's music. I can do this. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Thou remembers from once I sat upon a promontory. I'm just like, I've done this before, guys. Come on. I love it. Oh, this is why. This is all why right. Got. <laughs> Anyways, guys. Uh, so I appreciate you all joining in. Uh, Wayne, like I said, hopefully we could do this again. Let's talk some more. You know, you're always welcome to the vodka stream. Like I said, if you want to talk more about this and uh, yeah, Wayne's going to be on the real motion live stream tomorrow. Talk 
again, talk more stuff with uh, Garza and uh, Ben for sure. And uh, go ahead and uh, where can people find you, Wayne? Oh, man, Instagram, Wayne T. Carr, um, and Twitter now. <laughs> I can't believe it on Twitter, but yeah. Good luck. Good luck. Thanks, man. Thanks. I'm still figuring it out. <laughs> It's crazy. Well, you know, I, we all welcome you to the Phantom. And, of course, Ray Porter, where can they find you? Um, around. <laughs> no, around I'm around. Just, just walking around, you yeah, know. Just around. I'm, you know, basically just, yeah. yeah. I'll just follow Wayne from place to place. <laughs> there you go. See, I smell a sitcom. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> That would be dark would be side hilarious. you again. Wah, yeah. Wah. <laughs> yeah. Now I could, you know, the sitcom, you know, two theater actors from, you know, from different backgrounds. And it's like, Hey, I think I, I see it. I see it. I see it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, Scott, go ahead and uh, take us home. Oh, well, tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at ScottDC27. You can find me at my podcast, DC Film Squadcast, wherever podcasts can be found. Of course, we're on Vero Facebook, YouTube, and you can find the entire network of shows at squadcastmedia.com. There it is, guys. And uh, appreciate it. Yeah. Now, this is why Scott always sends us off. He's always the last one to go off, even though technically me, because I had to sign off this, but I'm not as good as Scott. Anyways. Film Junkie, yes. You can go ahead and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like, thumbs up button. If you'd be so kind, hit that notification bell so you know when I'm doing this stuff. And, of course, we got the uh, the Patreon, the closet down below, all everything. And, uh, again, thank you guys for uh, joining. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, Wayne, we're hopefully see more of you. Ray, you know, we're going to we're gonna share that dark side drink. We, You know, you've talked about it before. Done we're going to do that eventually. Done and yeah. done. Thank you for letting me uh, come and come and visit. No problem, man. Anytime, anytime, you know. And then, of course, Scott, thank you for joining in uh, and everything. And uh, we will talk to you guys later. You guys are awesome. See ya.